Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can we hold hands together? Just pray. This is our last session together. Just pray in the spirit. Lord, I receive everything. 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 Just pray in the spirit for a few minutes. Those outside at the overflows participate. Let your hearts be open. The Lord is turning our lives around tonight. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Let every other name fade away. Lift your hands, lift your voice, Lagos. Let every other name fade away. That's only you that every other name fades away. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Remember our song one more time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. us tonight dear spirit of the living God let these moments that we have together be life transforming 
change our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please be seated. There is a lot to do tonight and um, this is our last session together. Pastor, again, thank you. Thank you for the love. Thank you for everything. And um, boy, Lagos, thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. This is our last session together. This has been a revival series. Please, let, let me have your attention now, inside, outside. And God has been helping us. The purpose of revelation is to create enlightenment, to construct our understanding, but also to help us to now begin to make progress. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 9 says, And the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. And so the entire conference has been a feast of lights, different dimensions of revelations. The goal is not information. The goal is not even transformation alone. Are we together now? That the truths that we have will translocate us from one dimension to the other. Tonight is a miracle service. It's our final session together. But then, it's very, very strange what I want to teach you. This that I want to teach, I wish I had all day to teach it. Praise the Lord. And there is a reason for that. What I want to teach you tonight is why many people may never prosper in the body. It's a very serious teaching. And I have a confession to make before I start. And, and let me confess up front so that um, you can have all the time you need to forgive me. Praise the Lord. Um, I had something else in mind to share. But yesterday after the session, we were at the office and we just began to have um, several discussions. We we're talking about several things. And then eventually we stumbled across the issue of time. That was even what brought this. Um, why we were discussing the strategies to be able to redeem time. Remember, we've been dealing about this time thing. We've been discussing this time thing. That many people do not have the time to serve God. The time to love God. And the reason we began to trace many factors and chiefest of them is this issue of resources, finances. People have the heart, but our civilization has been so constructed that you will have to solve some problems. Are we together? Before you focus on doing the things that you're doing. Uh, you're not going, it takes time to know God. It takes, oh boy, I'm seeing lovely people already. It's been years also. God bless you. And then Judy K, God bless you. She was over with us. Bless you. Every other person, if I don't know you, I love you. I love you from the depth of my heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so um, that, that bothered me. And then I shared with him a little experience I had. I don't talk so much about myself and the early days, but I remember when we had a crusade, very powerful crusade, starting out in ministry, and it was a wonderful crusade. The sick were healed, people were delivered, and when the crusade was done, I was owing the sound people money. It's amazing how you can excel in one dimension of the kingdom, and then the very next dimension, it looks like God is not there. How could God show up in the meeting, heal the sick, Deliver the oppressed. I preached my heart out. People were born again. If you got born again under me in that meeting, you can't go back home. The, 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 the level, I mean, the fire that came on you to be born again was genuine. There was no pretense. And immediately after that meeting, I called on God to save us from the shame of these sound people. I was almost going to be jailed for no reason. Didn't steal anybody's thing. Just because I could not pay... 150,000. It was a lot of money then. I knew something was wrong. As anointed as I was, sincere, loved God with all my heart, 
My grandfather was a pastor. You mean God, there's no basis for helping me? I remember meeting a gentleman to discuss this with him and he gave a check of 90000 And I was happy. I called the people. I said, come and collect your, your money and, and leave me in peace for God's sake. I, I, I confess how distracted I was at that time. You, you really can't pray. Any call coming, you are looking and you know that these guys, and, and, and you don't have to guess. You, they are the ones. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then when that happened, I got so sad. It, it was so frustrating. Um, eventually, the guy collected the check, traveled back to Kaduna, and went to the bank, and they said there was no money in the account. The guy carried that annoyance and reversed back. I said, well, what, what sort of a life is this? You see, one of the things about the apostolic ministry is compassion is not something you have automatically. You pass through many seasons that you'll be saving people from. It's the way you build compassion. Compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. So part of the burden of the apostolic ministry is many times you will be allowed to pass through different phases so that when you are ministering to people, there, there has to be a connection. When you are too dissociated from the pain of people, you will just talk nonsense. But when, so I, I'm coming with a very serious burden. A burden that requires no verification. My pain is enough verification that when God does not help you in this area, you are not free. The Bible says that part of the ministries of the Son of Man, that, 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 how did he put it? He says, um, whosoever the son sets free is free indeed. Were you ever told lack is bondage? Were you ever told financial incapacitation is bondage? I want to show you a few scriptures and please pay attention. This is more than the issue of money. This is an issue of destiny. This is an issue of God's program. This is an issue of prophecy. Are we together now? Haggai chapter 1, verse 8. Three scriptures, and then we'll see how God will help us tonight. By the way, for those outside and those who have not submitted their prayer requests, remember the requesting. If you didn't come writing any, please feel free to write and just wave it. There should be someone, an usher or so, that will pick it up. Please, let's attend to those outside. And then those online, I think there should be a way... There are people streaming, just connect by faith and let's watch the God of wonders help us. I'll be preaching for a few minutes and then we'll just step back to allow God set this place on fire. Praise the Lord. Go up the mountains and bring wood. You don't get wood on the mountain. You get wood in the forest. So he's talking about something else here. Please look up. We're only starting, oh, the plane is warming up. Go up the mountains and bring wood. Use that wood you get from the mountain to build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, saith the Lord. There is a dimension of my glory that is at the mercy of this assignment. Go up the mountain. When you get to that mountain, there is wood that belongs to my house there. Make sure you don't spare it when you find it. Get wood from that mountain. Then come down and go to my house. Please keep the scripture there. And then use that wood to build my house. And when my house is built, I, the Lord, will be glorified. You know from scripture that every time you talk about mountains, you talk about spheres of influence. So this is a very prophetic instruction. Number one, he tells you where to find wood. Go up the mountain. He also tells you that the journey is not downwards. There is some effort to get to the mountain. The first assignment is to prepare to climb up. Go up the mountain. Then get wood. He says, bring it down and build my tent. It's amazing that money is made out of wood. So go up the mountain. 
get wood there. Come down with the wood you get. Use it to build my temple and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. This instruction, as simple as it looks, is the reason why the purposes of God has been limited. Listen carefully. We're talking about revival. I had the time, I didn't have the time to finish up part two of the ordinances of revival. My topic for yesterday night and this morning. And one of the indices, one of the things that must help a people to have revival is influence. We didn't have the time to get there. Influence is the ability to compel people to subscribe to your value systems without using force or cruelty. You can mentor nations without speaking. Influence is a language. Are we together now? And the Bible tells us, listen very carefully. We are going to go to a very serious scripture now and read it. And you will read it yourself. Proverbs chapter 22. Verse 2. And then we'll go to verse 7. Proverbs 22 verse 2. And then we'll go to verse 7. Ready? Please read. One, two, read. The rich and the poor. Please give us King James. Let's have King James. The rich. Proverbs 22 verse 2. Yes, go ahead. One, two, read. The rich and the poor meet together. Question, where do they meet? Don't rush. Where do they meet? They meet on a stage called the earth. And the Bible says, the Lord is the maker of them all. Not the maker of them so. The Lord made men. They separated themselves into groups called the rich and the poor. And regardless of what category you end up being, there is a testimony that the Lord made them all. Are you getting me now? Very, very important. Verse 7. Now, this is where it becomes serious. If there was no verse 7 and if verse 7 was not a reality, there would not be need to teach this in a revival conference. One to read. The rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is servant. Now, we're beginning to establish certain things that are not pleasant. It didn't say the rich, the rich anybody will rule over the poor anybody. And the borrower anybody will be servant to whoever lends him. The rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is servant. This is an ordinance that if you ever get to a point where you are a borrower or you get to a point where you are poor, you have signed up something on behalf of yourself and your generation. Please listen. This is not about money at all. Pay attention. It's more than money. This is not a financial seminar. This is, this is a revival meeting. These are part of the tools that will need, will be needed for this season. Are we together? Very serious scripture. How many scriptures did I say we'll look at? Genesis chapter 42. We'll start from verse 1. May, may we get what God is showing us this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, read verse 1. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn, where? Stop. Stop. <laughs> Jacob was a prophet. Are we together now? And Israel were God's covenant people. But there was a problem. Israel had no business going to Egypt. Egypt was a place that represented servitude. 
Egypt was a place of witchcraft, wizardry. Egypt was a place that did not subscribe to the government of God. But there was something in Egypt that Jacob did not have. And when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, Why do you look upon one another? Next verse. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. So corn has a sound. From Egypt, it can make the Israelites know that there is corn in Egypt. It says, Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. So when the Bible says choose life, this is one of the ways to choose life. That you can die without corn. Jacob is a prophet. Please don't, are we together now? Jacob is a prophet. A man of the covenant. Nothing to be desired in Egypt. Except for the fact that hunger began to make the sons of Jacob to look at one another discussing. And Jacob himself became hungry. There are things in life you cannot do bold face for. It's a matter of time. It will hook you. The children started crying and the prophet kept quiet as if it was not an issue. A time came, he said, look, look, look. Why are you looking at yourself? I have heard oh, that there is, there is corn in Egypt. Get up and take your sons. Go to Egypt to go and buy corn. And he sent ten of the sons. To go to Egypt. And that was where a lot of things happened. Eventually, you read it, the exaltation, you know, um, God brought them and they stayed in, in Goshen and began to do well until Joseph died. And then there came another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. Bottom line, it was that journey. And the confession of Jacob is where my interest is. He says, so that we will live and not die. So you can have God and still die. The man who was talking about had a covenant with Yahweh. And he said, I know I have a covenant. But the level of hunger that lack of corn is bringing, we can still die. You've heard me say, hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. When Satan wants Israel to go to Egypt, he does not say come to Egypt. He will do something to the economy. The moment corn is finished, men were not designed to resist the sound or the sight of corn, including prophets. That when a prophet hears the sound and the sight of corn, he cannot resist it. They went there and because they were borrowers, and they were poor, they eventually became slaves. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower will be a slave to the lender. Are we together? Now, this is very, very important. This system that we're living in is an antichrist system. You know that. An antichrist system means against Christ and his value systems. You must understand this. That means that we have everything within a system, a civilization that is against the ways of God. And one of the areas where Satan himself sits on is this mount of wealth and the economy. Why? Because we live in a civilization that is dependent on economic health. Are we together now? It's very important. It takes resources to preach. In fact, sir, when Jesus died and the angel came and he resurrected, they called the guys that were witnesses of his resurrection who would have been apostles bearers of that news that he is risen and they gave them money and they said keep quiet till today Satan is still paying men to say keep quiet 
Are we together? It's very important. So we are dealing with something here that is more than just riches and cars. What this is something that is more than just prosperity and having money and jeeps and all of that. We are talking about something that, if not remedied, our children will be slaves. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. These slaves, this slavery that you see, when you study history, you know that there was a time they talk about slave trade when they sold human beings. It's a concept that was spiritual, sir. It's not just a sociological concept. The Bible talks about a woman and that that woman can make men wealthy. Please listen carefully. And the name of that woman is Babylon. That Babylon is not just a nation. Babylon is not just a system. But Babylon is a woman that sits upon a horse. And the Bible says she holds a cup that is full of the blood of Matthias. That Babylon is also like a harlot. She can come to you. She's a businesswoman too. She can make deals with you. Now listen. That when you prostitute with Babylon, it is possible that she will give you wealth. And the slaves that came to eat from her, she can sell them to you. This is very powerful. Revelation chapter 18, please. Most believers do not understand that the subject of kingdom wealth and supplies is not an issue of just prosperity and finances. Many have taught it to just mean, oh, I want to be rich, wear suits. No. It's more than that. If money had no effect in kingdom advance, we would not have any business with it. The vendetta here is the ability of lack of resources to impede kingdom advance. Are we together? Yes. There are more people depressed today, sir, because of lack of resources than because of demonic attacks. Pastors have hung themselves. People have gone to the prayer room and they came out and dragged their dead body with letters. I'm tired of living. High blood pressure used to be a challenge for older people. In fact, people within 50s. Now you see someone of 19 years, 20 years having high blood pressure. If nobody talks about it, very soon our lifespan will be 20 years. Please understand that I'm not talking about oh, money, money. No, 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 no. This is much more than that. If all you are concerned about is what to eat, what to wear, a jeep, a little estate, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about men with a burden for nations. I'm talking about the purposes of the kingdom. It doesn't take too much to live comfortably. There are four realms of living, financially speaking. The first realm is called survival. It's a cause. The second realm is called comfort. It's a blessing. The third realm is called luxury. It's a blessing. The last realm is called extravagance. It's a cause. Believers have financial boundaries. We are not given liberty to be careless. Both survival and extravagance is a curse if you are in the kingdom. So if you are angry and you just go and blow your Rolls Royce on a wall to be angry, it's a sign that you are not under the government of Christ. You are not aware that there is a Lord of the earth that you are part of. You are the God of your life. So you behave like that. Are we together? Is God helping us this night? Revelations 
chapter 19. I will just read. Oh, if, okay, beautiful. Sorry. Um, you can just have your attention here if you can see. 18 verse 1. After these things, I saw another angel coming and so on and so forth. And verse 2, please. He cried mightily with a loud voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen. Is fallen and is become a habitation of devils. He says, and of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Verse 3. Now please, I want you to read it. If you can see it. One to read. For all the nations have drunk of the wine and wrath of what? Have fornication. And the kings of the earth have done what? Committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Stop there. This is the woman that makes the kings of the earth rich. She's a serious woman. She's both a prostitute and a businesswoman. That means she can see you and lure you and say, come to me. I can make men rich. All that you look for, I have. And the Bible says the kings, please keep the scripture there. Please keep the scripture there. That the kings of the earth committed fornication with her to get the wealth. That, that's why the Bible says to envy not the wicked. There is a history to their wealth. Their fraternity with this mystery entity called Babylon. So when Babylon falls in one hour, the kings put their hands on their head and say we are finished. Because this was the source of our wealth. Our fraternity with this she goddess called Babylon. The Bible says the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. She's a very serious businesswoman. Go to verse 9. We'll soon see what she sells. Verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall do what? Bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. 10. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come. Look at what will happen in verse 11. Read verse 11. One to read. For no man buyeth her merchandise anymore. In other words, we are not ready for this, your product again. Are you ready to see what she sells? Hi. 12 and 13. Let me show you what this woman can sell. Ready? The merchandise of gold uh -huh, and silver and precious stones and pearls and read on. And all manner vessels of ivory and all Now go to verse 13. Read carefully. She has spoken about now these are spiritual things she's selling. She has fit. If you sell these plenty things, why should you be poor? How did you get them? Now, start noticing the things she sells. The spiritual context of what she sells. She sells cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and anointing. Anointing anointing you can go to her and say madam i need fame and i need power and she says i sell it to are we ready read on and find flower read on and beasts read on and sheep and horses read on and chariots and vessels. What else does she sell? And the souls of men. Wow. A woman who can sell souls. So I can meet with her. And produce an album that does not make sense. 
and everybody must buy because my transaction with her was the souls of men that when you hear that music whether you like it or not your head will just run Babylon the merchant are we together now so we, we are meeting a woman here who is a businesswoman, sells gold, sells anointing, sells souls. I can buy souls from her and become famous in an instant and cause every man who does not know God within my territory to subscribe to my influence. Remember the kings of the earth are those we admire. And the extent of their influence is strange. I show you the mystery. The mystery is this goddess that holds the blood of Matthias called Babylon. Now here's what the Bible says that we must pay attention to. I needed to show you that so that I now show you some scriptures and it will now make sense. Mark chapter 8 from verse 36. I love Jesus. Jesus inspires me. Mark chapter 8. Don't mind my elaborous, my elaborate uh, movement here and there. I will soon connect something now. Everybody read. One, two. Jesus is speaking like a businessman now. Ready? What shall it profit a man? Hold on. He's talking profit here now. What shall it profit a man if he does what? Gain the whole world and loses his soul loses his soul to who gains the whole world from who i will show you that there is a transaction that this woman does that you don't pay with money you pay with your soul when satan came up the mountain and met jesus he said bow to me let me save you the rigor of going through these mountains one by one all the kings there, I put them. Bow to me and I will give you everything. He said, for it was given to me. What shall it profit a man? So there is a technology in the spirit. Watch this. Babylon has a system of increasing men. But you can know whether a man is increasing from the economy of Babylon or the kingdom's economy by one litmus test. Watch his soul. If your soul dies as your wealth grows, there is a fraternity. Because Babylon has an assignment to extract away your soul in exchange for things. Please hear what I'm teaching you tonight. Are we together? You were a prayer warrior before the business came. But the business came and was so constructed in a way that you can't pray again. So your prayer life is going down but your wealth is increasing. An exchange has happened in the realm of the spirit. Third John. <laughs> Third John 1. It's just one. Third John 1. Let's go to verse 2. Third John. Popular scripture. Now it will make sense to you. Ready to read it? One, two, read. I wish above all things that thou may prosper. But, but, he gives you a caution. Make sure that your prosperity is also even as your soul prospers. This is what the devil will never give you. Mm -mm. That I prosper and my soul still prospers. The devil says no way. Choose one. Now there is a generation that is saying we will not choose one. That's where the battle is. This is why this meeting tonight is here. It has never been that you can choose wealth and your soul too. You have to choose one. Choose to be blessed. And then your soul goes in exchange. As the collateral for your wealth. Or the souls of your children. You have to give something. And now here comes a group of people. Who say I will prosper. But even as my soul. Prosper. 
Please sit down. That's why I told you this is not a wealth seminar. This is more than a wealth seminar. This is prophecy. I'm showing you the prophetic dimension of these things. I know your grandfather was rich, but at the exchange of what? Are we together? That he will not hear the sound of the name of Jesus in the corridors of his house. And you come as a very zealous graduate. I love Jesus, but I want to prosper. And Babylon says, no. We control this economy. Based on what? I will rise to become a manager and will not sleep with anybody on the way. They say, no, it's not done that way. I will get a job, but I will not bribe with 200,000 in advance. He said, who do you think you are? In Nigeria? So the, the real commodity is not real estate. It is your soul and the world. There are people who don't collect money. They don't need it. There are realms where you only pay with your soul. The receipt writes paid with your soul. You want to do ministry and rise to regions where nobody knows your father and your mother. Who do you think you are? You want to build a church and you don't come and bow to us? We, we. They know themselves. They are all around the world. Let me tell you this. Hear me. If it is influence you want to rise to, let me give you a very good advice. There is a meter in the realm of the spirit of the rising of men where spirits look at. Once you have not gotten to that level, nobody comes to you. But there is a threshold level when you get to, uh -uh, the, the devil becomes interested in your case. Who is this lady who is rising like this? Okay? Many people like her. Many people like him. You are worthy of our negotiation. And they will come to you. They will come as men and they will come as spirits. What I'm telling you this night, go and ask any blessed man. They will be angry with you or they will admit it. This is the other side of wealth that cannot be spoken. It's a realm where when you get there, you come out quiet. Saved or lost, just come out quiet. You are not allowed to discuss with anybody that is there. This man talking to you is not a fool. Oh. Let me tell you, when you see me talk like that, I'm not just doing some religious things. I have met, I have met multi-millionaires. I have met billionaires. I'm not financially illiterate. I'm, I'm about to share with you my testimony. It is true that no man can rise unassisted. It is true that there are realms that are within the power and the will of men to stretch to. But there are dimensions that is not given to men in this earth to rise beyond. Whether you will admit it or not, let me tell you there is a level of influence you cannot cross. Not in today's world. It's not true. We continue to fool ourselves and we allow ignorant people fool us that it's just with intelligence they got that far. No. 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 Let, let God be true and let every man be a liar. In 2007, until then, I had not taken the issue of finance seriously. I took anointing, God, ministry, and all of these things. Please listen. Am I wasting your time? Please, this night, your heart, this, this thing you are seeing, your, some of you are sitting here for the sake of your children. What I'm teaching you, I've already gotten it all. I've gotten it for myself. And then I had a vision. In that vision, a man of God in this nation 
I was before him. Then I sowed a seed. I brought some of what I, I had and I dropped it. And he said, no, there's still some money in my pocket. I should bring out everything. So I brought out everything and I dropped it on the ground. And then he blessed me. The next thing changed and I was in a room. And that room, there were different currencies on the ground. Pounds, dollars, naira, you know, different other currencies. And then I was asked to pick some. Surprisingly, that lust of carrying all was not there. I just picked some of different currencies and I held it. And then I saw a light and I looked up. And I had the audible voice of God. And I had four words. Massive kingdom wealth transfer. These words. Are we together now? Yes. And then a few years ago, I was praying. And this is when I confronted a spirit that I want to talk to you about. I was praying and crying that God will bless and lift his people. Then all of a sudden, my, my ceiling just shifted. And standing before me was this creature. The eyes was as big as the head of a man. Like imagine that and then the tail, it looked like, um, like a dinosaur. But the tail had its own life. I'm just sharing with you an experience. Are we, are we together now? And it was looking at me with fierce anger, red eyes. And it says, so you, can, you think you can bring God's people into financial blessings. That was my conversation with that spirit. When that thing happened, my life entered a dimension of wealth. I said, what is this? What is the mystery? What is this one again? There are decisions that we make that keep us poor. But there are spirits. It is true. Are we together? This is what he's looking for. Your soul. Not your money. Not your bank account. You've heard the popular statement that they sold their souls to the devil. It's not a lie. And it's not a proverb. It is true. You don't sell your soul to the devil by meeting him and say, devil, take. No. If you intend to rise to a level where you become one who is a pillar for the coming revival, you can learn about prayer, you can learn about fasting. If you miss this lecture, you will pay for it, I guarantee you. You see what is happening? School fees is increasing. Parents, talk to me. House rent. Land. We were having a discussion at lunch with pastor and his wife and he was telling me of the, the price for one plot of land in this your area. I said, that's why people are angry. You see someone talking to himself alone and just moving and is angry and, and you say, are you okay? Why will I be okay? You know, all that kind of thing. I mean, you see it happen. People talk on the streets even when they are sleeping. That's how far depression can go when you reconfigure a human being to become something else. The concentration of members is, not, is, is less than 10 minutes. If they give you 10 minutes, they are mine. They are looking at you, but they are not there again. Let me tell you the truth. I'm not just trying to make you laugh. These are serious issues. The top three reasons statistically confirmed why marriages fail. Number one, is money and money related issues. Number two, intimacy issues. Number three, issues of in-laws and external influences. Money. Again, this money thing. The gospel is cheap, but it's expensive to take it to the lost. The body of Jesus was hanging on the cross. No prayer warrior could bring it down. No prophet. The prophets prayed Jesus from heaven to earth. But they could not pray Jesus from the cross to the tomb. No amount of intercession would take that body back. 
because the body was hung by a system that was antichrist. It took a man of wealth called Joseph of Arimathea. Your salvation that you are laughing as if it just happened in one small pit. Wealth played a role in bringing the body of Jesus down to his virgin tomb as a prophet said it would be for salvation to happen. Are we together now? There are many people who have books that have been inspired by the spirit that can change nations and had visions and the Lord told them, make sure these books get to the ends of the earth. But the book has not gone beyond their community for one singular reason, not revelation, not lack of prayer resources. We have many people in the music ministry here. They will tell you the challenges that they face. That you have to stand for truth. It's a difficult thing. If you don't have anybody you are taking care of, this message will not make sense to you. The average person in Nigeria has at least three or four people depending on your obedience to God's principles to eat. Some of them are our parents. Where will I start teaching my father mystery of this and, and wealth? And, and Will he learn? And yet you are connected to them by blood. You cannot leave them that way. It's difficult to send our children to schools that subscribe to the value systems of the kingdom. And because of money, we will send our children to places that are devilish. The person teaching them does not have, I mean, you leave your children well cultured. They return back like, 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 like cultists. Because they were under the, and because you too, you are busy looking for money. When they come back, you are asleep. By the time they are ready to go to school, you are out already. That happens for 10 years. So the devil makes sure anything that represents light, the eyes of your child will not see it. And the tool is money. So the only mentors they have are people who do not represent the value system of the kingdom. There is a serious time bomb that we are programming and laughing at. And if we do not arise, a generation will come. This is why our teenagers hate God. The devil carefully grew with them. And right now their obsession is something else, not God. You off your television, he will switch it with his phone. And continue watching what he's watching. You talk to him and he say, no, my rich uncle said this. And you stand there. How do you defend that statement? Remember, you are broke. Remember, you are poor. I was told about how much these people invest in sound just to have a concert. I couldn't believe it. I don't know how many houses you buy with that money. Is that true? If somebody comes to marry your daughter and tells you he's a child of God, he's born again, Jesus is Lord, he has been taught and mentored. As honest as you are, you hate to do it, but you have to ask him, so young man, how are you going to take care of my daughter? If it does, don't worry. I've seen not God we are talking about here. <laughs> Do you know how many people have married outside God's will because of money? They knew that this brother is the will of God. But they said, you, you know how life is. I mean, this is, this is not my fault. They were explained to him and said, we, we know we are supposed to be together. But the reality is, I can't, be, you, 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 you didn't try for me. So I have to just get another person. And on the wedding day, she's smiling. Will you take this person? Yes, I do. She knows she's in trouble. But the family is depending on that as a breakthrough. Ah. How will I call on your name and end up in shame? Will 
I bow down before you and then bow down before a man hey because you Sit down. Sit down. Do you know how much one block is? Young man, let me talk to you in one minute. Do you know how much it takes to build a house? Calculate your salary times your lifetime and see if it will build a house for you. And yet you need time. We are talking of revival here. Time. I've been out of Zaria since Saturday. Was in Lagos. Returned to Abuja. Went to Kogi State. Returned back on Friday. Had a meeting. Left on Friday. I'm here now. Let me tell you sincerely. It is true that I'm doing it because I love the Lord. But I'm also doing it because some things have been in place. Did you hear what I said? I'm being in the name of honesty. If my mother calls me now, for instance, and said there's a problem, or my father, there's a problem, or the people I take care of, there's a problem, do you think I will stand and be able to preach? Let's not pretend this thing. Oh, let's call it what it is and trust God for grace to solve it. The more we keep lying, like Jacob, one day we will send our destinies to Egypt and say, go and bring corn. I am dying. I know you are a fresh graduate. I will never sleep with any man. In the name of Jesus, I was raised in the name of the Lord. The devil will not come to you at that time. It's too early. It's after three years of unemployment. When you are strolling around, you don't even know rain is falling in Lagos. You are just moving around and then the person that asked you out three years ago will come again and say, I'm still here in case you have made up your mind. At that point, you'll be surprised that you say, God, stay out of this. I gave you three years. If you cannot change my life. I have the privilege of counseling young people. You do not want to know the extent of the compromises. That happen for people to get these things. We laugh about it in church and we act as if it's alright. It's not alright. The average young man now is afraid. 40 years still in your father's house. So when he hears you praying, you say you better go out of my house now. With that your prayer thing. And they blame us men of God. And say we are the ones indoctrinating people with this Jesus thing. And not allowing them to grow. As though God is a nuisance to civilization. It's a programming. A time will come where we'll be given an option. Choose God or a successful life. Someone shout no way. <laughs> what shall it profit a man? There are many pastors today that we see, respectfully speaking, that manipulate people and try to extract money. They didn't start like that. They started sincerely, but they jumped this class. They attended prayer class, Bible study class, evangelism class, even character class. They vowed vows before people that they would never manipulate any man. But the day they looked at, their son looked at them and said, Daddy, why are we like this? Ask Jesus to help us. That's the day you call your wife and say, see, something is wrong. Whatever you see me do next Sunday, just believe that I will ask God for forgiveness. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, If it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand. If it's not by your spirit, please don't let me have it. 
for everything I need is in you. What shall it profit a man? The imbalance is to say wealth is unnecessary. You lied. You lied. You lied. Because you must serve God or mammon. You are not given an option to be an atheist there. You must serve one. And the way you serve one is for one to serve you. You have to be in between the two. God above or money above. You must serve God at the detriment of money. Or serve, money will serve you while you serve God. I made up my mind to never serve money for the rest of my life. But I knew that making that statement would just be an arrogant communication of an ignorant Christian. There had to be a way out. Can you give me 10 minutes to show you something? And then we'll pray. This is my final session with you. I have a serious burden. Many prophets and apostles don't come here. We have contributed in no small way to limiting the body. Usually when you start talking about finances, people think you are talking about it because of the absence of power and the absence of real deep spiritual knowledge. And so you are at liberty to choose to be a spiritual man or a businessman. That theology came from darkness. Over the next 10 minutes, I want to show you what is called the economic system of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is systemic in its operation. Now, I don't mean to insult you. I know there are business veterans here. And Lagos is a place with a lot of um, business, most of our value in this country in terms of products come from here and the idea is not to insult your intelligence or insult your intellectual prowess no but it is to show you what the Lord has brought by grace it's a contribution to the lifting of the body even on this wise and let me tell you sincerely if you pay attention and give me the next 10 minutes of your life I vow to you in the name of the God whom you serve that you will wave poverty goodbye and it will wave you back goodbye. The first session of my teaching is a tragedy. It's a bad news. But it's a bad news with a lot of respect. Anybody, please come let me use you. Come my friend. There is a way preachers have taught finances. Please listen. I say this respectfully. My love for the body of Christ has been vetted again and again. I have a lot of honor and respect and regard for the body. I will never fight the body. This is an attempt to correct something serious. There is a theology of wealth that is being proposed by preachers sincerely and truthfully from a heart of sincere people who truly love the sheep. But the quality of the information is not producing the required result. They are in the distribution of the tribes of Israel. Please listen everybody. There was a tribe that was not given an inheritance. They are called the Levites. Are we together? That means that the Levites were a select people who would be priests unto God. Is that true? And because of that office, they were exempted from having any inheritance. And God said he would be their inheritance. So because of that, they, the other tribes were mandated to take out of their resources. Are we together now? And to bless this Levitical tribe. That means... The economic system of a man of God is slightly different from the economic system of someone who is not directly in ministry because of this Levitical advantage. Listen very carefully. If I teach you wealth from the standpoint of a Levitical advantage, if you are not like me, you will not prosper. 
This is why many people are running into ministry. Because the template that is proposed is a, Levit a Levitical order. And because you cannot have 100 pastors in a church, only 1% will be blessed. And then the rest continue to say, these men of God are scamming us. They are not scamming you. It's a system that was designed. But there is a system that empowers everyone. This is what I want to show you. Are we together? The second thing I want to correct is to end once and for all the fight between men of God and businessmen as to whose information about wealth is correct. So a businessman is here laughing at men of God and saying, don't, don't shout and let any riffraff tell you I receive anything. And he's being sarcastic for a reason. That you need to be taught principles. There are principles of wealth, exact principles that can be simulated again and again and bless people. And it is true. And then on the other side, a man of God is here blessing people. And people are returning with strange testimonies. And he says, look, forget about all those business people. They don't know what they are saying. Just believe what I'm telling you. Receive the word, the prophecy from my mouth and you will prosper. And truly you will see that in both scenarios, people are coming with results. Now, when you have two dividing opinions, both having results, there is a problem. Are we together? So I want to show you something. The economic system of the kingdom is a system that must be studied for you to prosper. I'm just going to show you. I will not explain because of time. I will just touch it. One day God will grant an opportunity and we'll sit down and deal with this thing seriously. Are we together now? There are spiritual laws that make for wealth and abundance. And there are the natural laws that make for wealth and abundance. For many years, the body of Christ has been in a straight betwixt to choose either. And I'm bringing the balance now that they are both called kingdom laws. Both the spiritual laws and what you call the natural laws are two sides of the same coin. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, right. There are certain things, thank you sir, you'll come up shortly. There are certain things you must know about the economic system of the kingdom. Number one, the F is the Lord's. Write it down. This is a very serious revelation. If you want to be blessed from God's economy, you must understand who owns things. The challenge in this kingdom, men do not own things. Owners are rebels. You, you have to understand this. In this kingdom, we don't own things. We are only given access. Owners are rebels. You may freely eat of the trees, but it's not your own. The prodigal son had access, but he wanted ownership. Lack comes when there is ownership. And he had enough. Insufficiency comes when there is ownership. It's not a little revelation. The awareness that the earth is the Lord and his fullness. There are things in the earth. The fullness thereof, the walls, the systems, and all they that dwell therein belong to him. It's a revelation. So my car belongs to him. My life belongs to him. My business is his business. It's an indoctrination that must be settled once and for all. Depression comes when you own things. Giving cannot happen when you own things. Every time we own things, who, there is a law in this kingdom. Whoever owns things must be responsible for their maintenance. Listen carefully. So when you own your life and you own your money, you are absolutely responsible for its maintenance. If ye be evil, he says, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Ghost? 
Just this revelation alone is enough deliverance for many Nigerians. My car, my house. Are we together? My certificate. Of course, you say that in terms of an earthly show of responsibility. But you must indoctrinate yourself that the fundamental law in God's economy is that everybody has access by him all things consist. You have to know that. That's what it means for him to be Lord. The word Lord, L-O-R-D, means absolute owner. It also means manipulator. That means it is within his power to push things according to his will. So when he owns it and he demands it, I should not take it personal releasing it because the earth. This is the revelation that Jesus was showing when he said, go to that place. You will see a cold tight. Remove it and bring it. If they ask you, tell them the master or the Lord had need of it. the Lord. When the body of Moses in the book of Jude was being contended upon by Lucifer and Archangel Michael because it was in the earth realm he said the Lord rebuke you. The owner of this territory is the one who authorized me to take the body and although Adam gave you this I invoke the power of the owner rebuke you and that was the end of the contention. Are we together now? The Lord rebuke you. So you must know that God is the owner of everything. All wealth comes from God through men to men. Write it down. That's the second law in God's economy. All wealth, all lifting comes from God through men to men. Notice the variables. God and men are not equally important, but they are important. All wealth comes from God through men to men. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Give, he says, and it shall be given unto you. I'm not talking about the giving there. That be, to understand that scripture, you have to read the previous verses. He that shows mercy shall obtain mercy. So it's not just talking about giving. It says, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men. Say men. One more time, say men. If you don't know men, you will be poor. You have to understand this entity called man. He's a variable in the equation of wealth. You know oil, you know real estate. But what is man that you are mindful of? Not the son of man that thou visitest him. Everything has value because of man. Are we together? I, I, uh, <laughs> What's number one? Lord of all. What is number two? All wealth comes from God. If your wealth comes from your boss, you are in trouble. All wealth comes through men, not from men. The, the attitude we have is that it comes from men. And vain is the strength of man. I will look up to the hills from whence cometh my help. It says my help. I don't know where your own comes from. But my help comes from the Lord. The owner. The Lord. The owner. So when one man fails me, the owner is still with me. He can use another man. Because men are only channels, not sources. Listen, when you know this, you will know you are not poor just because somebody has refused to pay you. It's not true. It's the obvious answer, but not the right one. Ten years I've refused to rise simply because someone refused to release my money. I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but it's not true. When your wealth comes from men, you are limited by them. But it comes from God through men. And as far as I, the last time I checked, there are 7.2 million men on earth. 
billion men on earth. That's enough actors for God to use. A director that has that much crew should not have an option reaching you. This simple revelation will set you free. So the issue of bitterness and hatred is not, no, 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 no. And someone looks at you and says, as far as I'm here, you will not rise. You say, hey, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. A man that was once a baby in the hands of a woman, just because he's sitting on some board, looks at you. There is a name God is called, the father of spirits. It's the word Abba, source and sustainer. It's a title no man can take from him. If you're in ministry, please get this revelation fast. Otherwise, bills will kill you. You will go to pray and stop praying. You will not know when you are strolling around your room, thinking and worrying. Are we together? So when the bill is 10 million, 100 million, 1 billion, and all I have in my account is 1,005, it makes no difference because the Lord is my... Who is your shepherd? The Lord. Who is your shepherd? The Lord. Sit down. Listen to me. Even during night times, huh? When there is no light, there were shepherds watching their flocks by night. So the problem is not night. The shepherd is still there. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. TBC, are we still together? Thy rod While shepherds watch their flocks by night, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And that Lord who owns the earth and his fullness is my shepherd. Therefore, I shall not want. There is a technology in his wisdom that ensures that I shall not want. This is it I'm showing you. You cannot read this and study this. You are shown by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Are, are you getting what I'm teaching you? Please, after this, I know that I will soon stop so that we'll pray for the sick and finish fast. But the part you are now hearing, listen to it. Don't think you have gotten it now. It took 30 years of the kind of messages we keep recycling around. Thank God for apostolic platforms like this. Are you seeing why there is no hope for many people being rich? Because the fact that men, let me tell you this, anything that takes the place of God, there is an attribute of God designed to fight it. It's called his jealousy. God's jealousy is a weapon that maintains his position by fighting anything, including your helper, who becomes your source. God can fight something he once gave you. The moment it becomes him is his enemy. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nobody I know in Lagos. I don't know anybody. I'm just on my own. Sir, can you change my life? And the man looks at you. Always remember, whenever you see a man, remember, through men, through men, not from men, through men, not from men. So when God wants to use a man, God is saying, I want to come. Can you be a pipe? If he refuses, God says, no, no, I won't take it personal. I will find another. Listen, 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 listen. Victory in this kingdom is knowledge based. What you don't know, you see, you see, the realm of the spirit is empowered by knowledge. I come from the north and there as many of you know there may not be many people to stand up and support you over 75% of the people 
that partner and support us are not from the north and are not even people who are part of the ministry. Are we together? If you believe what I share with you, your life will change forever. I have been made a non-executive board member of companies I know nothing about. They kept me there because they traced like Jacob and Laban that for the sake of this man, God is doing something here. It was in this same city that we were given a property in one of your most expensive places. After a meeting like this, Brothers and sisters, I don't say these things to boast. The Bible says the things that we have seen, the things that we have heard, the things that our hands have handled of the word of life, this is what we teach. There is a reason. The spirit of the Lord kept putting it in the heart of your pastor yesterday. Unanimously, all of them agreed and said we must bring this revelation. This is more than a financial seminar. You have already had a financial seminar. This present truth. He that hath an ear, he said, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. So number one, he is Lord of all. Number two, it comes through men to you. Please get this revelation. Men are important. Don't ignore men. But men are only important as conduits. Conduits. Are we together? Now, the third thing is what I want you to listen. Please listen. Listen. Please listen very carefully. You have to get this. The Bible says, if you are unfaithful in unrighteous mammon, are we together? It says, who shall commit to you? Then he calls something strange, true riches. What is it? Come, my friend. One other gentleman. No. Oh, and okay, yes, you come. Watch this. Hold my phone, sir. Please lift it up. Do you have some money? Let me give you some money. Watch this. Hey. You people are selfish. You are saying he should keep it and receive something. Now, watch this. Lift it up, sir. Please don't be embarrassed. Lift it up. Now watch this. In our economy, this is called money, currency. Is that true? What is the assignment? To buy products and services, to buy conveniences and to help redeem time. This is the purpose of this. Do you agree with me? Every businessman will agree with me. Now watch this. When you want this phone, you should have this so says our economy are we together so if you if this man wants to buy this he will exchange it for this are we together now i want to show you that this too is a product there is something that buys it the name of what buys money is called true riches it will sink now just listen very carefully that means that money buys a phone. If I want a phone, what do I need? If I want money, what then buys money? You were told that this is capital, but I'm showing you that this is a product. There is a capital that buys it. The name of that capital is called true riches. There are seven of them. Oh dear, tonight is a miracle service. <laughs> no, said no, we have to walk in the spirit of. I just have, I, 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 it's, don't, I'm the one preaching. Don't worry, I know when, where I will stop, and then we have to pray. Are we together? Everybody say, True riches. When the Lord opened my eyes to this, I put my hand on my head. You can be looking at this phone forever. Once you don't have this, it will remain like a museum. 
you will watch it and never get it. Like Moses looking at Canaan. You are seeing it. Honey is dripping. Milk is dripping. You can't partake of it. But this is the problem. And I'm showing you that in God's economy, it does not start here. There is another factor that buys this. So when you want to have this, you have to come to God to give you the capital that buys a product called money. There are seven of them. I will list only three. Yes. One. The first capital that buys money is called wisdom. Please write it down. The Bible says, by me, kings reign and princes decree justice. Talking about wisdom. It says, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. All that love me will eat of me. The capital called wisdom. So if I want to make you rich from God's way, if I give you this, it's the same thing as giving you a phone that can spoil. When this spoils, we say it has finished. Just like your phone spoils. Are we together now? So there must be a system of replenishing. You are not wealthy until you have the ability to replenish. If you are fruitful and cannot replenish, you may not beg, but you also not laugh. We're not talking of money for tea and bread. We're talking of transgenerational shifts. Is it making sense to you all that we've been making now? Wisdom. Number two. The second... spiritual reality that the Bible calls true riches is called favor. Please listen. Favor. That favor can buy money. Favor. Are you ready for the third? The third that the Bible calls true riches is called the gift of of men so when you say God make me wealthy when you see a man coming imagine an ATM coming what is man I say it this way what is in man what did you put in your ATM that makes you hide it if I see the way you are protecting an ATM I suspect that there's something sizable there so what is in man that you are mindful of not the son of man that you have that you visit him you have made him a little lower than Elohim crowned him with glory and, and honor set him above the works of your hands what did you put in man that when a man shows up we should rejoice what is in man what is in a man that your pastor took out so much time to invite what is in man Wealth is in men. They can transfer it not by giving you money. They can transfer it. One man's credibility can turn your life around. It is wealth. Listen very carefully. I told you I will give you three. Are we together now? Two riches. Should I give you one? No, I can't give you all. Are you ready for the fourth one? The fourth one is called the gift of a man. Not the gift of men. The value of a man. Capacity, skill is capital that buys money. Now listen very carefully. That's the one most people know. Four is okay. 
It's okay to make you a multi-millionaire. It's okay to change every course, every yoke. It doesn't matter from who. Let's review the true riches. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. The value. The gift of a man. Please let me have three, two more people. Come. It's not impartation. Two more people. Just come. We're rounding up. We have to work with time. There is a time we must not exceed tonight. In the name of Jesus. While you are sitting there, be praying for me. Now, all of you compress yourselves together. I like to use this illustration. Watch this. Call this the table of greatness. There is no space for you. Let me tell you in the name of honesty. Dreaming that there is a space waiting for you is just a psychological way of encouraging yourself. The reality in this life is that there is no space for any man. It's already vacant. But this is what the Bible says. The gift of a man will make room, make room for him. There's no space for you in Lagos. Every land has an owner. So what makes you think you have your own property? The gift of a man can make. Make rice for me. Rice is not there yet. But I can go to the market and combine some things. And make something that was not there to be there. The Bible says the factor responsible for that possibility is the value. A measure of your usefulness. May you never be so poor that all you have is this. I feel sorry for a man who has this. Watch this. Bring matches. Set this on fire. You cannot carry the ashes to your governor or to someone. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Leave it. Let, let the wind even push it so that you will really see what you are saying. Are we together now? That you can, someone can set this on fire. But imagine your little child playing with matches on your bundle of money and just sets it off and is laughing and is saying Christmas tree. And you come now, watch this. And he sets hundred thousand on fire rejoicing. Will you kill him? But do you have the ability to re? It is the ability to replenish that does not make us cry in dry season. Everybody who rose up in the kingdom, check their lives. This is what bought that. Is there any man so discreet and wise as thou art? Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped. I'm showing you how God helps men. So when you come to church, you are given wealth. I know that we have been trained that until I put my hand in my pocket and I bring this and you say thank you. I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. The Bible tells us that the word of God is able to make us wise. Doth not wisdom cry. Crying and say, oh simple ones, you lack this. You don't get it by getting this. Your job can only give you so much of this. Please believe me. If you receive 200,000 in Nigeria, people say you are doing well. Compared to what? Compared to the 12 relatives you have that have refused to be born again, I will not let you rest. You see them in your dreams. How much is their school fees? Compared to what? If you earn 200,000, everybody wants you to bless them at 200,000 rate. 20,000 is already gone for Titan. You, they know you earn 200,000. You can't earn 200,000 and give your parents 5,000. True riches. You're understanding the laws? That God is Lord over everything. So whatever he gives me, 
I am a steward and not an owner. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required that in stewards, a man be found faithful. Faithful. The reward for faithfulness according to scripture is more territory of influence spiritually. Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou had been faithful over a few. I will now make you Lord over plenty. This is what we continue to seek every day. Please pick one and give me. This thing has relocated people from one region to the other. It does not have mouth, but it has power. This thing has determined who people marry. This thing has broken families. It has mended others. This thing has twisted messages. This thing has taken people to hell today. There are children that were not supposed to come that have come because of this. As, as little as it is, it's dangerous. It has done so many things. Change the character of people. A man who used to love his wife would just make 20 million and she would come and see her clothes in another home. And say, I just attended a seminar. They said, trust no one. From today, you are still my wife. We are not divorced. But just to let you know that that is your home. You stay with the children. It's all right. What shall it profit a man? If he gains this and loses his soul. Let me round up by showing you. I shared with pastor that the Lord revealed to me seven dimensions of wealth. I will only give you three, two. Then we'll go into the miracle service. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. The other one, whoever carries it there, God bless you, eh? God bless you. Praise the Lord. Play something for me, Mike. Just pray in the spirit in one minute. I'll just show you something I will pray. You are not wasting your time, I assure you. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. I will see and I will rise intentionally by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? This is over your destiny and your finances. You're the name above every other name. What can you change? What can you change? Jesus. Sing it one more time and hear what you are singing. Creator of the universe. What can you do? What can't you do, Jesus? Listen, you're the name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change, Jesus? While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Why? Because the things that are seen are temporal. 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 Subject to change. My financial level. Subject to change. My ministry level. Subject to change. He said, but the things that are unseen. That if your result comes from the unseen realm, it cannot be changed. You are able, great and mighty God. You are able, 
Jesus. Sing it one more time. You are able, great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. Please sit down. I show you a mystery. Please just give me five minutes. I know our time is gone. Don't worry about the healing and all of that. In five minutes, we can wrap up that one. Impartation does not take forever. In one minute, one minute, you can receive something that can turn your life around. This is really the key. A key is a small object you can put in your pocket. But forget it and you will stand before a big door from morning till night. The Lord showed me seven dimensions of wealth that will come to the body of Christ. And that at this level, we are only in the third dimension. Dimension number one is called transactional wealth. For you to understand transactional wealth, you have to understand the natural laws of wealth. And there are three of them that support this. Please listen very carefully. Transactional wealth comes from the word transaction, exchange, exchange. Are we together now? It is suggestive that it is the kind of wealth that comes by selling products and services that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization. I choose my words carefully. Products and services that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization you can have what is worthy of commendation but not worthy of reward please listen let's talk a little finance now for you to understand this you have to know the law of value the law of value is a a representation you have to understand value value is a measure of your usefulness value is not just the skill you have it's a measure of your ability to provide solutions solutions that are needed and useful to the degree to which you can provide solutions to a territory you are termed valuable this is why preachers prosper they say men of God make money from nothing. No. They are providing solutions. It is supernatural in context. But it sustains an ability to transform people. It is needed. It is useful. The law of value. You have to be valuable. What do you have in your house? That's where the miracle will come from. Auxiliary laws that are supporting this first dimension of transactional wealth having value you have something to offer but it's not enough to be rewarded the second law that supports this listen carefully is called the law of productivity productivity is translating your value through refinement into products and services that are needed and useful your value in its raw state is worthy of commendation but not reward please listen very carefully are we together now? Yes. Products and services that are needed and useful. But even that in itself does not guarantee that you will be patronized. The same way you have a shop, you have this, you are productive, but you are still poor. The third law that supports transactional wealth is called the law of exchange. The mystery that connects you and those who need you is a law. Are we together? It is one thing to be productive. But it is another thing for men to be willing to come. And then to pay. This is why many people pray and say. I have everything they need. I'm a pharmacist. I have the drugs. I have everything. But no one is willing to come. There is a law that governs it is at the point of exchange that the reward happens reward does not happen at the point of productivity 
Reward does not happen even at the point of value. Until you get to the point of exchange, there is no reward. Transactional wealth. Are we there? The general rule is this. That our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to three things. Number one, the need or the demand for what we do. Number two, our ability to do what we do. Number three, the difficulty in replacing us. This is called the law of compensation in business. Are we together? That our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to three factors. One, the need or the demand for what we do. Number two, our ability, skill, proficiency, prowess in doing what we do. Number three, the difficulty in replacing us. You will be poor if you are easily replaceable. The degree to which it is difficult to find another you is the degree to which we cannot do without you. The second level of wealth is called transformational wealth. Transformation means change of state. At this level, you don't sell anything. You don't sell at this level. You give. It's a very costly thing because you are not rewarded immediately. Your giving must have a track record until the recipients of your value become transformed. So it's deceptive. It doesn't look like it can be a stream of income. For many years, you keep building people free of charge. This is why many pastors suddenly get to a threshold where in one month, blessings come. They didn't just start right from campus they paid someone school fees they preached they gave someone five naira for pure water they helped someone with ten thousand for they are not selling they are giving they are teaching and laboring and pouring their hearts a mentor raising a mentee pouring his heart not asking for anything in return when they become changed they become too grateful to leave you there is a law listen there is a law in the spirit that every time you dispense value, whether given or sold, you are authorized to be rewarded. So Mordecai saves King Ahasuerus from death and they archive it and don't, re don't reward him. And the law begins to kick in heaven. One night the king could not sleep. And he said, bring me the chronicles. He opened it and said, what has been done to this man? Every time you have dissipated energy, time, and money to bless anyone, you made an investment. Wait for your returns. The financial market does not manipulate that one. Be patient. As surely as the Lord lives, it will come. Don't be angry with a man when you see God stepping in to bless him. There is a history to his benevolence. Transformational wealth. There are people today who are living off, they are lifting others. They have lifted too many people to be down. There are pastors that have raised too many people in the music ministry. They, they, they are, there's a history, there is a track record. If I fail lifting you up, you will lift me back up. That means if I subject myself to become a failure to lift you up, when you are there, the law makes sure that you will lift me up. My mother didn't seem to do well as it were in life. All to give us an opportunity to life. Our success has made high success. People go to my house and just packed with cars sincerely. And sometimes people just get there and knock. Are you apostle's mother? Thank you. Thank you for giving birth to him. Open the gate. We have something for you. Who are you? Transformational wealth. What if she was angry when I would behave childish and killed me? You know how many souls she, has, she would have stopped from going to heaven? Transformational wealth. So when you see someone come now, kneels down and gives your pastor and his wife a hundred million, don't be angry. Find out the history. Who did he change? And you see, the difference, oh dear, the difference is that transactional wealth is fixed. 
if I'm a billionaire, I will not buy one pure water hundred million just because I'm rich. The price is fixed. Pure water is pure water. Correct? Even if it's in a hotel, you will just add pure water plus the money for the atmosphere. That makes... So it can't be more than that. Now watch this. If I'm a billionaire and I give you 1,000 for pure water, I expect change. Just because I'm rich. If I want you to go, but there should be change. But in transformational wealth, your reward is limited by the perception of the recipient of your value. Are we together now? That means that it is possible that the impact I produced in your life can be so much you think I am worth 10 million. So you will bless me according to your capacity and your perception of how far my value blessed you. This is why transformational wealth works like wildfire. In one month, a man can be given a house. You are not giving a house for selling something. You buy the value of it. It's powerful. And everybody can get into the realm of transformational wealth. The act of benevolence is an investment. Many greedy people have not lifted anybody to leverage on them. If you see many old people loitering around the street and you ask, even if they don't have children, they spend their lifetime who did they raise? God brought too many men. I told you wealth is in men. Hapa, you didn't bless anybody. You didn't advise anybody rising. You didn't pray for anybody. Assuming all your children are irresponsible. What of men? You had neighbors. They had children. Your, your, your children had friends. Everybody cannot be a failure. Men are like ATMs. They can't all fail at the same time. I teach you wisdom from the spirit. So while you are seeing all these little children, God bless you, take 20 naira, the, all of this, there is a record in heaven. A day will come, someone will see you and say, you don't know me. But what did you say your name is? You say, John, this. He say, which, which one is that? He say, the father of this. Say, that black man that doesn't work very well, come. You must be a manager. He said, sorry. He said, mm, I will explain to you later on. Your father did something to me. In 1975, my tire patched and it was raining. I remember he could not work well. And because of that thing, your prayer point of yes is answered in a minute. Two riches. Let me tell you this. If you are the one eating your money alone, I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But let me tell you sincerely, you will pay for it using your lifetime. This is not about being greedy or being this. He has dispersed abroad. His righteousness endures. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. But there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Poverty can be programmed. Listen to me. Our parents may not have been able to help us the way we ought to. But you can, you can make your child head boy before he arrives. There is something you do to everybody. Your, whether your child takes 16th position, he must be head boy and head girl. Your relevance and your contribution is too much. They will find who is close to you to reward you. And the interesting thing is that you can only change the future. You can't change history. So it cannot be manipulated. The record of your benevolence is there. There are men of God today who will never beg for bread. No. Their concern is never personal needs again for life. They have helped too many people and raised too many people to be hungry. Are we together? Please, uh, there's something I want you to, with all pleasure, sir. I've been looking for a way of blessing you. 
When everybody forgets your name, your birthday, your absence does not make any effect. It's proof that your presence too did not make any effect. There are things that can be fair signs to show that you are transforming lives. Is God blessing us? The last level of wealth is called sovereign wealth. <laughs> sovereign wealth. Wealth by the finger of God. Wealth created by prophecy. There is a system in God's economy where he can veto the limitations of men. It is within his power. It's not a license to not be valuable. It's not a license to not transform. But it's part of what I taught yesterday called systems of advantage. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. Once upon a time, there was hunger in Samaria. Women were eating their children. Are we Bible students? Two women ate one child. They were about to eat the other child. And there was a contention. The other woman said no. And they brought anger. And the king tore his robe in anger. And when the issue got to Elisha, he came and said, By this time tomorrow, he was not suggesting. He was not revealing. He was creating. There is, there is the creative dimension of prophecy. It's the highest level of prophecy. You don't call names and numbers. You don't announce what would happen anyway. You make it happen. Please listen. Saul, the son of Kish, left his father's donkey missing to go and look for it and after three days they wanted to return back and they went and made this strange system called samuel listen the moment saul saw samuel the donkey started going back home no prayer donkey that they tried to look for what you call loss is relative there is a grace that when you encounter a donkey for three days you could not find it but just meeting a man, the donkey started going back home. So it was never missing. The grace to send it back home was not there. That a thing can live your life today. You invested in a business that crashed. If I say, where is the money? You say it went, but it's still on earth. There is a voice that can send it back. Number two, he said when you are returning from here, you will find three men holding two loaves of bread. They bought bread to take home more for their children. But because you met a grace, he said they will salute you and two of them will give you. Did they buy the bread for you? No helper helps by default. Every helper has relatives who are in need. Whatever will make him leave them and help you must be divine. Are we together? Then he said, by this time tomorrow, and a foolish man made up his mind to say, even God would do. Ah. Was he there the last time God opened the heavens and bread came? food for angels was rained down and he said don't preserve any leave whatever spoils by the next day i will give again there is something about god we need to know it is true that we do not become lazy because of this that's why i showed you the progressions but there is a point in your life where things can fail. There is a day when your fishing will not bring fish. You are valuable. But that night, whatever happened to the fish, as usual, you could not catch anything. At that point, you need to know the sovereign wealth. 
Master, we have toiled all night. And he said, I know what you are looking for. Let me show you a dimension. Cast your net to the right side. God is about to change someone's life. Now sit down. The last scripture. And then we'll use 15 minutes to allow the Lord blow up this place. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. Never forget this scripture for as long as you live. I already sense a very strong presence of God here. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. Please project it for us. Outside, inside, make sure you follow it. Ezra chapter 6. Is it possible? Can we have it projected? Ezra 6, please. And verse 14. It's not possible. Okay, please turn, turn to your own Bible and let's read it. I want you to read it. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. Ah. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. If you are there, say amen. Let's read together. One, two, read. And prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo and the men built it and they finished it stop there that's all I'm looking for it is one thing to build it is another thing to prosper it is another thing to finish Sovereign wealth. There is such a thing as wealth from the mouth of God. There is such a thing as a man's life changing overnight that you can be seated here and it is possible that tomorrow, by this time, you will be on your knees saying, Lord, I have heard that you lift men. But which one is this? It said, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Did you not call here Zion? In Zion there can be captivity, no problem. But there is a God that can turn things around. Zion, lift up your voice in one minute and begin to pray. Turn again our captivity, O oh God, like the streams of the naked. Pray, Shalabaradash. Ah, God is coming through for someone finally. Weeping and just for a night. But hear me, Zion, joy comes with the morning. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Listen. In 2007, I was in Port Harcourt. I loved the Lord, but things were not all right financially for me. I attended a prosperity convention in Christ embassy listen carefully I remember that night please if you are here to submit your prayer request just begin to submit it now we're praying I just want to share with you a story and that night he was evangelist Eddie Owase and after he ministered he challenged people to give challenged people to sow 
And by the next day, I remember the Lord gave me an instruction. I'm not challenging you to sow. I just want to show you something. I didn't have much. I carried everything plus my recharge card, my rechargeable. I placed everything, zipped my entire wealth in one bag. And by the next day, I carried it. I was on my way for that conference. It was in one of the model churches. I was outside at the overflow because I didn't know want anybody. I just sat quietly, my thing outside. And after he finished preaching, the Holy Spirit decided to disgrace me. When people were sowing, people were sowing lands, sowing houses and all of that. The Holy Spirit told me, he said, don't move yet. I will tell you when to move. I stayed quietly. When everybody finished giving, he said, now you can go to the altar from outside. I held my bag and I was dragging it like a foolish man. And everybody was watching me. I was praying in the spirit, my eyes teary, because you cannot bless yourself. In this kingdom, you are lifted by another. I went to the altar and I dropped that bag. And I went back. I sat down outside. Immediately I sat down, the Lord spoke to me. He said, my son, you have entered wealth. Four days later, it was around this period, close to my birthday. A young man calls me in the morning, 6.10 in the morning. And says, please, is this Joshua Selman? I said, who are you? He said, please, just send me your account number. I said, no, no, no. This scammers, who are you? Because I don't even have much. What I have, you will not come and frustrate my destiny. Who are you? And then I sent him my account number. And what that gentleman sent at that level, ah, no, it should let you know that there is a God. The second thing that happened was God connected me to a man who would later become a general in the army. That man fell in love with me. You look at us, you think we are gay. Sorry to use that expression. To a point, he loved me like Jonathan and David. I remember I told him one time that I was traveling and he said he doesn't have much home, but I should manage 400,000. Ah! I said, oh God, let me not ever annoy this man in my life. Give me wisdom. <laughs> then the Lord gave me an instruction that very soon he was going to send me to Bishop David Oedipo in Siena land. Now listen very carefully. Let me show you something. And that morning the Lord told me the seed that I will carry. I got up, took a flight on my way to Canaan land. Went and dropped the seed, did everything I would do. As I came out, the Lord, and remember I'm doing this as a man of God. You don't receive from a colleague. It's not a law in the spirit. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed. I went to him. I'm showing you how sovereign wealth works. The Holy Ghost told me, lay your hands on the ground. There. I laid my hands there. And he said, from tonight, you have entered the overflow anointing. The last of sovereign wealth. I've shared it in many places. You would have heard my story. I went to buy sugar cane. What did I go to buy? Sugar cane. And I met two strange women. Somehow I knew that these women were not humans. They looked like old mothers. They wanted to buy the sugar cane too. And I said, Mama, I'm your son. Let me help you and buy they said, no, 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 we have money. You know, they were trying to remove the, this thing. They tie and tie, tie it. And I said, save yourself that trouble. Let me just help you and pay for this thing. And they said, okay. Then I paid for the sugar cane for them. And you know how mothers bless. I don't know if it happens here. They will be talking till you disappear. They will be blessing and calling the names of your children's children. 
and the women began to bless me not more than 100 naira sir and I didn't hear what they told me but one of the old wretched tattered looking mother looked at me and said my son forever walk upon gold this man standing before you is a product of many anointings my life changed and Abraham met Melchizedek I show you sovereign wealth and Melchizedek blessed him and said blessed be Abraham son of the most high possessor can a man bless like that possessor of the heavens and the earth and his life changed many of us are at a season right now where we are trusting God for a level of supplies that can redeem time so that you can have the time to face destiny please hear me I know you have businesses I know you are valuable but in these few minutes are so desired by your pastor his wife and the leaders that there is a level of sovereign wealth was it was there not a raven that came to feed the prophet at Bucherith? What are you turning to? Open the eyes of the light. There's no one like you. Sing that part again. That's the only part. What are you trying to say? What are you turning to? Stop. In God's economy, anything can be anything. Anything plus God is the answer he puts. Your weakness plus God can become your wealth. Your little shop plus God can become an estate. Once you introduce God in the equation, the answer is whatever he calls it. Is someone ready to pray now? The moment we are ready to pray, I will pray for the sick, pray for the request, speak over our lives, and then we are done. We will do the impartation. But there are two prayer points. Number one, Lord, change my financial state. Listen. And then number two, right from the conference, from Wednesday down, Lord, the grace and the mantle, the unction that must rest on my life in this season, let it come. My heart is open. Someone is praying here. Someone outside is crying to the God of heaven, the maker of men. Please make sure you submit your requests. Halabaratos kabra dege de baladabash. Ente salash kabra nda soda baladabaladaba. Let that grace, O oh God, come upon my life. Give me wisdom. Give me favor. Connect me with helpers. Hallelujah. Now look up. You're about to receive now. Listen. Please listen. Listen, there was a young lady in the Bible called Hadassah. Listen carefully. Hadassah was a young poor girl who was kept and mentored by a man called Mordecai. Are we together? Vashti is banished out of the palace and the king is looking for a wife. So many ladies are called to go and meet the king. 
And Mordecai inspires Esther to go and try her luck. Watch this. Because what was on her is what is coming on you. Listen. Please listen to me. I want you to be sensitive, please. What is on you is what controls what is around you. Please listen to me. I can know what is on you by what I see around you. Thou anointest my head with oil, but what shows is my cup. He does not anoint your cup. When he wants your cup to overflow, it is your head for your cup to show. You are anointed. Please listen to me. There was a grace upon that young girl. Let me show you how the grace works. Please listen. The grace works by sight. That means for the grace to work, the eyes must see you. But once the eye sees you, it must bless you. This is how the grace works. Esther chapter 2, oh boy, and verse 15. The end part of Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 says that Haggai, the keeper of the virgins of the king, that she found favor in his sight and the sight of everyone who looked at her. Once you made contact with Esther, you will never pass free. No, something must draw you to be interested in her life. Please understand the grace that is coming on you. There is a grace. These bodies are only executors of what is happening in the realm of the spirit. Let me show you how the grace works. Verse 17 says, And Esther was loved by the king above all the virgins, and she obtained favor. He made her queen. The moment the king saw, the only person that can be exempted from blessing you when you receive this grace is a blind man. But once they can see, Come again, my brother. Now watch this. Let me illustrate. You stand here. Another person, come. Come, please, quickly. Our time is gone. You stand there. Everybody watch. Now continue to walk slowly. Pass yourselves and keep coming. Are we together? This man is your helper. He's in Lagos, but nothing is on you. Turn. You keep praying. Lord, change my life. This is your helper. He's within your vicinity. But nobody helps like that. Keep going. There is a grace. Watch this. Watch this. Keep going. This guy can give you anything you want. Remember from God through man. This is the man. But there is nothing on you that calls him. Watch this. Then you come for this conference. And you just thought you were sitting. Watch this. Something comes on your life. Watch this now. Listen very carefully. Now watch slowly. When you get there, don't pass yourselves. Now, it happened last week. And it should repeat itself again. Except for this conference. Now, two of you are going. Pass. This starts calling him. And he stops. It's impossible for him to pass. Because something has come upon you. You call this favor. You call this connection. I show you the technology. Men don't just come. There is an unction that calls them. Listen to me. Listen to me. This anointing creation has never been disobedient they were trained to only obey a voice and if that is not the voice that calls they don't obey Lagos has riches it is the wrong voice that has been calling that's why it has not come did the prophets not say oh earth here oh earth here it says, as for the earth, out of it comes bread. Even the king is fed by what is in the field. Listen. Please hear me. 
when I found this grace and it came upon my life my life changed if you look at me and something in you will push you to bless me something in you will push you to support what I represent this is a major secret behind the shift in my life and in the ministry I came with all my heart. If this is all you receive, you can go back rejoicing. Listen, you can go back and meet the same landlord that was treating you harsh over a house and looks at you and says, how are you? Sit down. And you are tempted to say, is he interested in me? Just remember the conference. Thou anointest my head with oil. I know you have a restaurant. It's one thing to cook. It's another thing for someone to come. You have exhausted your mind and its intellect. You will need a realm that is higher than the realm of men. Is someone ready to receive? Father, release upon my life the Esther anointing. Please pray. Please pray. You are a man of God here. Yeah, pray. You need it for your ministry. The power that compels favor by sight. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, your grace is sufficient for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, your grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. You have put your angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Hallelujah. In the name that is above all names, I stand by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic. And in the name of Jesus, inside, outside, I decree right now upon your head and upon your destiny. Let this grace rest on you now. Let this grace rest on you now. Businessmen, receive the Esther anointing. Career people, receive the Esther anointing. Hallelujah. Hear me. And God is able to make all grace. How many? You can have some graces. Like you can have some keys. Help those under the anointing please. All grace. Every door in this Lagos. That should open. For you in this season. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. And I declare, Efata, may that door be open now. Be open now. Hear me. Let's handle difficult situations now. The heart of a king is in the hands of the Lord. And like the waves of the sea, that means he can say no yesterday and say yes tomorrow. I declare, Everyone who is a gatekeeper holding the keys to where you need to go, I turn their hearts towards your favor. Hear me. Every destiny helper 
must arise from Lagos or any part of the world. Wherever they are, for as long as their feet is making contact with the earth, I decree and declare between now and the end of July, by prophecy, I call them to appear in your destiny. Appear in your destiny. I pray for every dying business, struggling business. Shikapandos kabarato cheke. In the name of the God of Jeshuron, the one that rides upon the wings of the wind, I decree and declare life to your dying business. Anyone called jobless here, he said, Why sittest thou idle? He said, No man employers. When he spoke, there was a place for them. I decree and declare by the power of the highest, the God who is the maker of men gives you jobs that will surprise you. Every yoke of hardship planted in any family, responsible for transgenerational hardship, in the name of Jesus, it ends this night. And it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be removed from your shoulder, the yoke from thy neck. And it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Let me pray. Hear me. If you are standing here under the sound of my voice. And you have been in the same position for more than one year. I stand by the God of heaven. Who anointed us to shift men. By the power of the prophetic. I shift you to another dimension. I shift you to another dimension. In the help them, please, my God. Help them, help them, my God. Ah, help them so they don't enjoy themselves. I shift you to another dimension. Have you ever had this proverb that a nation is born in one day? It says, but as soon as Zion travails, let me prophesy to you that what five years of your destiny should, could not bring, I stand by the power of prophecy and I decree, I don't know why I'm mentioning the number five, but I declare by the Spirit in the next three months, 90 days, like the ark of God in the house of Obed-Edom, let things turn around in your life 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 hear me everybody you have helped before and has forgotten you like the wine presser Joseph pleaded with him and said when you meet Pharaoh tell him about me there are times that you have the gift but you do not have a voice at the gate you will need someone already at the gates to speak for you and the wine presser forgot him and extended his hardship by two years but God remembered him and the man said I remember my wrong this day whoever must remember this night like King Ahasuerus let a book of remembrance be opened for you tonight
Hallelujah. Our time is gone. Please help me with the request. Please. The Bible, can you just turn it? We'll put it back. This is a mystery that the Lord opened my eyes to see in Scripture. There was a time, you can often find even if it's just for five minutes, you own it back. There was a time three kings came to fight a king in the Bible and they wrote a threat letter, sir, pastor. And then the man brought the threat letter before God and laid it on the temple and said, God, see it. Someone is trying to be you. If you are comfortable with that man, then leave it there. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Let me tell you this. For those of you who have followed our ministry, this is a deep mystery. The testimonies that have come is not a ritual, it's a personal dealing from God. But with a grace and a covenant that backs it. I may not be able to prophesy to everyone this night. I may not be able to do all these things. Our time has gone. Immediately after the prayer, I don't even know if we may be able to pray for the sick. We may just do the impartation finally and then we are done. But listen to me, let me tell you, this is a representation of your pain. This is a representation of your frustration. This is what is eating your time and you are reporting it to God. Father, this is what is trying to take your place in my life. Every time I desire to love you, here it comes. The Bible says what God has joined. You were joined to Christ and a stranger is trying to put asunder. You are reporting a foreigner to God. What then shall separate us from the love of God? The worries and the cares. The school fees and the bills. The health issues and the death sentences. Will turn your life around. Just, I want you to pray where you are in one minute as I cry unto God over this request. Thank you. Wherever you are, you just pray. I will pray in one minute and then we are done. speak to you by the spirit these Egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever 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 I desire to come to you again that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. Please listen. 
you can go ahead and own the farm. Please help me. You can pack it up. No man anoints himself. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, one of the things that happened in that encounter was the light from him. There was such light that came into me. And then, in one of the encounters, the Lord said something very strange. He said, my son, I give you my presence as a gift. Now, I didn't understand that. Then I saw an angel of the Lord standing. And he said that this angel will walk with you. And he's called the angel of the Lord's presence. And I said, is the angel of the Lord's presence not God himself? But I saw that angel. And the Lord spoke to me that everywhere I travel to, I have an assignment that the light that came from him to me, there must be somebody in that meeting that that light must be released upon. Please hear me. This revelation will turn you I'm seeing oil coming on your head. Take that place now. In the name of Jesus Christ. That oil will turn ordinary people. Ordinary. Some of you are in ministry. You have struggled. You have done your best. This thing is not by trying. If it's not there, it is not there. Some of us are in business. Some of us are in different levels whatever it is i want to pray for you right now please those under the anointing and those outside you don't have to bring anybody up there's no space just help someone there but please let your heart be open to receive father in the name of jesus this five minutes for this impartation i promise you and we're done the healing anointing there are people here who must carry that grace right now from the left to the right from inside and outside like it was in the days of our fathers let there be an impartation right now right now right now right now receive the healing anointing there are people that must drink of this grace i activate it by the spirit please help them i activate it now by the spirit miracles signs wonders There is a grace for psalmistry. You can write songs, but you can receive songs. Miriam as a prophetess received a song. A song that was recommended even in Revelation. That we will sing the songs of Miriam. There are songs that don't die with time. They come from the realm of eternity. I pray for all those called into the worship ministry. I know that you have suffered a lot because you are standing for Christ from heaven let a Davidic order of grace for psalmistry rest upon you now songs from the spirit you will hear them in the night as you sleep in the name of Jesus melodies of revival songs of warfare battle cries in the spirit bring those songs from the throne I pray for all those who are called into the prophetic. I don't know what is stopping you from entering that dimension. But right now, I'm seeing like a boiling pot in the spirit. Help this lady. I stand by the spirit. And at the count of three, I'm seeing mantles. Ancient mantles of the prophetic. One, two, three. Take that place now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. The eyes that can see. Help that woman please. The ears that can hear. The eyes that can see. 
and the ears that can hear. Hallelujah. I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scrolls. The book must be opened and the seals if the seven seals are not open your eyes cannot see you can read your bible isaiah 29 11 the vision of all is become as unto a book that is sealed that they gave one who is learned and he said i cannot because he's sealed they gave one who is unlearned and he said i cannot because i'm unlearned listen Hear me. I want to impart upon you the spirit of revelation. The grace that calls man into the fellowship of this mystery. For no man was worthy to open the book and unlock his seals. And the elder tapped me and said, weep not. For the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed. And then I saw and looked upon the throne and I no longer saw a lion but I saw a lamb as though had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes every eye had a horn that backed it listen the spirit of revelation has authority behind it for every dimension there is a horn allocated for an eye when you have one eye, you have one horn. It was seven horns and seven eyes. There is an eye that can see that corresponds to the authority you carry. Isaiah 60 and verse 1 amplified. Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. In the name that is above all names, I stretch my hands to you and I declare understanding and insight into scripture, access to the mysteries. Receive it now. Receive, help that lady, my God. Receive it now. Insight. In the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle may the secrets of the lord rest upon your tabernacle may the secrets the mysteries of the kingdom rest upon your tabernacle hallelujah now i want to impart upon you a grace that you you will rarely hear being imparted it's called the spirit of might If you fail in the day of battle, it is because your strength is small. The source of my strength, the strength of my life, now you, my hope and my joy, my confidence. The source of my strength, the strength of my life, Strengthened with might in the inner man. Capacity. I pray for you. Many of you have gone through a lot. We live in a world today where there are challenges. And you need to be strong. You can lose a loved one. You need to be strong. The word of God takes time to manifest. You need the spirit of might. The endurance and the stamina to wait. All the days of my appointed time, he said, I will wait. May that grace, that it, the staying power, receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Finally, I pray, particularly for the members of this church, for being the platform for which the Lord has so lavishly invested his light and his spirit 
in this conference. The Bible says a worker is deserving of his wages. I pray for you that the allocation from the spirit for you as a worker, not just as an attendant, step into it in Jesus' name. I have to stop here. But let me assure you that your life will change in a way that will surprise you. Take note of everything that has been discussed.